I think I've got one you're going to love. If you love sports, even just mildly like them, but definitely if you were an athlete, maybe even you yourself were a coach, you're really going to love this episode. And you're going to, I think, be dazzled by her name. <laughs> she lives up to it every bit. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns, but most of all, hope to inspire you. I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset so that you can have the energy and the vitality that you want, need, and deserve in the second and better half. Let's dive in. My guest today is health educator, radio host, author, former All-American volleyball athlete, and her name is Sharky Zartman. And trust me, questions about that name might be where I start. She takes a uniquely sports psychology approach to everything mindset, aging, and living. As we can all find the analogy to life in sports and activity, I think you're going to love this one. So we all know names like Tiger, Colt, Rocky, definitely do not hurt your self-confidence. You must be the first Sharky <laughs> I've ever met. Well, What's actually, the story behind the name? Given name Were you born that way? Did you earn and it? And we all welcome. got nicknames from my dad. <laughs> my mom named us beautiful names, Maureen, Charlene, Kathleen, Janine. And my dad gave us all nicknames, Moe, um, Kath, Jinxie, and my name was Shark. And they, they just all called me Sharky. And so so that's all I remember being called when I was little was that name. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't earn it. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you grew into it. Who knows, right? <laughs> So let's and let's talk about that because I think you know the tiger becoming an athlete. I mean, you hear the word tiger over and over. You begin to think of yourself with certain attributes. You were an athlete and then a coach, and now you teach activity courses at a university. Well, first of all, I teach what at a community inspired college. you to and help so, people um, win but, at um, aging? How did that because- evolve? My students are really trying to figure out what they want to do with the rest of their life. And so it's a great place to work with young, young students. And when it comes to aging, I, um, for me, you know, I started thinking about this when I was in my late forties and I remember going to the doctor's office once and he goes, well, how are you? And I started giving him a list of complaints. Oh gosh, I'm tired. And you know, no matter what I do, I can't lose weight. I'm exercising all the time and you know, my joints hurt and I'm tired all the time. And he just started kind of laughing at me and he looked at my chart and he goes, well, all this is common for your age. And he goes, and it's going to get worse. (laughs) I know. And so he goes, so you might as well just accept it. And, you know, and I'm going, you must be kidding me. And so um, I go, really, that's all you got? So he wrote me a prescription for Xanax. (laughs) And I said, no. And I remember coming and I out of that going, said, oh, my gosh. And, and you, you know, won't be getting I mean, a Christmas you know, because card. Because being an athlete and, <laughs> and a coach and a teacher, I'm sitting there going, hey, I'm not going to accept this. You know, I'm, I'm going to find out, you know, what to do. And so, um, and so I kind of went on a mission and I really – saw that we have a really negative belief system about aging in our society. And I thought, you know, I want to flip that. I want to make it a challenge, something people can step up to instead of just accepting decline and thinking that's the way it is. Because a lot of times people get to a certain age and they go, oh, God, it's over. I'm 40, I'm 50, or I'm 60. And I'm going, you must be kidding me. When my, when my daughter started complaining when she turned 40, I went, are you kidding me? Snap out of it. What's wrong with you? You have a great life, you know? And so, um, yeah, I really want to inspire people to 
um, you know, take a look at their life and take manage manage the things that they can manage, control the things that they can control, because actually aging isn't a bad thing. We're the lucky ones. And we're still, we're still here. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so very true. I love it. And I love this whole, your hearing you talk reminds me of, you know, you must uh, also be a fan and good friend of our okay. friend, uh, uh, Growing Bold. Okay, sounds good. Right, Mark Mark Middleton. And if not, you need to, you okay. need to have a chat with too. him and sit down because you're just, you know, we're in the same parallel universe. I love that. And, and this uh, yeah. will talk <laughs> about changing the mindset. And you're using the right words here, by the way. So flipping things is what we do over here. <laughs> You you have a oh. special name for you know it your is a mindset strategy. that you can use for so anything in life, your not, not just aging. But mindset. Um, there are three um, characteristics of the rap, and I just made this up, <laughs> so <laughs> I've never seen it anyplace else. But that's okay. Um, R stands for resiliency. A stands for accountability. And P stands for purpose and passion. And I kind of got that from being an athlete because I know athletes need to be tough. I mean, you don't cry when you lose. I mean, you know, you learn from your mistakes and your losses. When you get beat down, you get back up. And I think that we need that type of um, attribute as we age, because we're going to get knocked down. I, I mean, aging is not easy. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff that can show up, you know, um, very unexpectedly. And we got to be ready for just about anything. And so, um, so the resiliency, it's kind of like Rocky getting knocked down. He always got back up, right? And so, right. And so I think we have to be a little tougher. We can't just whine and moan about every right. little thing out there. And I hear a lot of older people sometimes when they get together, that's all they do is complain about things, you know? And so, <laughs> and then the accountability, oh my gosh. I mean, we need Truth. more of this in our society. And, um, you know, because it's simply taking responsibility for our actions, our choices. And yet, as you know, from what we see in the media every day, people don't know how to do that. They're blaming everybody else. And you have no power when you blame everybody else. And so if you accept the responsibility for your choices, then you do have power because you can make changes. And um, I remember I went to a workshop once and it was on weight management and <laughs> everybody was talking about supplements and all these new gimmicks and everything. And this one guy stood up and he goes, I don't have any of this stuff. He goes, but I have something that works. He goes, tell your client to stand in front of the mirror and look look at himself or herself from all angles and say, I am responsible for this. <laughs> I'm the only one that can change it. And everybody started booing him and throwing things at him. And uh, yeah, and I thought, <laughs> gosh, you know, but it's true. And so um, accountability oh. is huge. And, you know, athletes, if they, we don't blame referees and stuff. And, you know, if we want to be good at our sport. And so, yeah, accountability for our actions, because I believe that a lot of the things we complain about with aging are bad habits catching up to us. And so we, we need to make changes. And then the last part, purpose, passion. We need to get excited about life. Yeah. We can't just give up on things because we're a certain age. I hate it when people say, well, I'm too old to do that. I know, no, no, you're not. <laughs> if you want, <laughs> mm. right, if you're, if you're passionate <laughs> about something and you have the capability, too old not you to. should go out too old and do not it. To, right? And, um, you know, we're all here for a reason. And I hate it when people are in, you know, jobs and activities that they don't like because they're just trying to make money. Um, you know, change that. You know, what do you want to do? You know, what excites you, get you up, it gets you out of bed in the morning. And, um, you know, so athletes are passionate about their sports. They have to be. Otherwise, you know, they're not going to do well. <laughs>
I love that. I love this. And I, I think actually, so if we can turn, turn the light and shine it back on you for a minute, you make such a great example here. I mean, you've had a great athletic career yourself and then a coaching career. And so I want listeners to hear this. So you, you know, when you've been at the peak of something, you know, at some point in your athletic career, you, you may have kept trying, but you probably found ultimately your fast speed today is not your fast speed as, at some point. Your, you know, performance level isn't what it was at one point. And so I want listeners to hear this. So there are so many positives right. about getting older, even if you feel like you're, you're not at your peak no, anymore. That's okay. that's um, okay. And I'm avoiding the word prime simply. I don't know why, but I don't love it. I don't know why. <laughs> um, um, but what have you personally found gratitude for in in aging well, or I'm 71 you years old and so not I am um, compared very you to you yesterday that I cannot go out and compete at the level I used to when I was in my mid 20s and so you know I accept that and I find other things that I can do with the same intensity that I did when I was a top athlete and so I'm I'm trying new things that I've never done before. And I'm really excited about doing that because I do have the drive. And, um, you know, I would love to get out and play volleyball again against, you know, that kind of competition. But, you know, I'm, I'm accepting the fact that, you know, that's not, you know, something that I can do right now. So I'm going to focus on what I can do, not what I can't do. And, um, Be excited about that because there's so many other things that we can do. If we just put all of our eggs in one basket and if we can't do that, we're depressed. I mean, that's that's not a good life. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so give me a couple well, ideas. What have you thing, What have you tried? I started writing. <laughs> that, uh, you're loving. What's so new to you? I um, have trying? written a lot of books. I've never written books before, and so I started yeah. doing that at the college because we needed to have some textbooks, and I didn't like the ones that we had. So I go, I can write one, you know, and so <laughs> and so I just started writing, and I decided that I really did love it. And um, I've also gotten into yoga. I never thought I would like yoga. As an athlete, I didn't think yoga was anything that an athlete did. But I went to a class once and you know, it just kind of melted my ego because... <laughs> Because I was so bad. I mean, I, I thought it would be easy, and uh, but I'd never done it before. <laughs> and, um, but it was good for me. It was good for me to experience that. And I just went, oh, my God, I've got to, I've got to learn more about this. This is great. And so I, then I put yoga in the curriculum at um, El Camino College 22 years ago because I said, our students need this. And I never, ever thought I would do yoga. <laughs> so, you know, I love learning new things. And I have that drive. And just because I can't do what I did when I was 20 doesn't mean I still, uh, doesn't mean I'm not a competitor anymore. <laughs> Fantastic. I love, love that. Okay. Now you say aging is a challenge, an opportunity, and a privilege. Have to agree with that statement. Love it. Obviously. Can you share your personal aging philosophy behind that that message? Aging is is really fun and don't worry about it. And, you know, I mean, uh, it's, you're going to get knocked down. (laughs) I mean, there are things that are going to pop up that you just, you know, like I said, we're, we're more at risk for just about everything as we get older. And we have to accept that instead of just whining and moaning about it. Hey, that's a challenge. Put your helmet on, get off the bench and get in the game, you know, start doing something about it. And so, um, so it is a challenge. And, and if we, and we're, it's probably the price we pay for being on this earth longer than, you know, people that left before us, you know. And so, yeah, if we want to be here longer and if we want to enjoy our lives and be healthy <laughs> and, you know, active, then we have to work at it. And so it's a challenge. It's also an opportunity, and the reason why I say this is because I see a lot of people who have never really asked themselves, what do I want? 
but they're so busy doing everything that they have to do. And, um, you know, they, they're taking care of their families. They have their jobs. You know, they're just overwhelmed with, and a lot of my students are like that too. I mean, they're just totally overwhelmed. And, you know, so it's an opportunity as we get older to finally ask ourselves, what is it that I really want to do before I leave this planet? <laughs> you know? What do I want? And it doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. And who cares if people don't support you? If it's something you want to do, find a way. There's people that out there who will, who want, maybe want to do the same thing. And again, a privilege. I am so blessed that I can spend time with my beautiful grandchildren and watch them grow up. In fact, my little grandson, when he was, um, he, he was four years old and I go, Calvin, I go, you're, um, you're getting too big for your car seat. You're growing up. He goes, Zima, that's what he calls me. He goes, I don't want to grow up. And I go, why, why not? And he goes, because when I grow up, you'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's so sweet. You Out know, of I the said, I, said of Calvin, I promise I will do everything possible to stay alive and so we can still have fun. And so, you know, <laughs> isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. Oh, and my I feel, gosh. And I, <laughs> he's eight now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As a showstopper. <laughs> and how old is Calvin? <laughs> He's eight now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, do you yes, have any I special do. advice for <laughs> listeners as they navigate their own aging process? I would say make your health and happiness <laughs> I your top you priority. <laughs> I, I think it's about time. And it's not being selfish. It's not being selfish. It's health care. And even if you're taking care of other people, if you're a care provider, you know, I see a lot of people that just focus on other people and they just let themselves go. I know a couple people that are taking care of people that, you know, are older and I'm afraid they're going to die before the other person because they're just letting themselves, you know, go, you know, to take care of someone else. And so I really think that especially as we get older, Mm -hmm. we need to take charge of our health and make our health and happiness our priority because our doctors are only going to be there for us. If something goes wrong, you know, or just check up and see where we are, you know, they're not going to do anything. My doctor sure as hell didn't do anything. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. My prior doctor. Yes. I, I hope you mean your prior doctor, but just yeah, check. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I, I, you can probably imagine. <laughs> just wanted to know how that story turned out. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I want to, while you were just talking, I want to check. So we're talking here primarily to a female audience. You haven't really said in isolation, you're right. speaking to women, but so much of what you just said really speaks to women who tend to be caregivers. Talk to me. So is your you message know, I, when you I sit down and write, are you writing for, to women? Um, are you writing you know, to I've, both I've men and women? Or share a little bit about that. But um, since I've been teaching women's health, I have been starting writing more for women. Because I really do think that women need a lot of support and we need to be there for each other. And we tend to, you know, communicate that way with each other. I mean, we emotionally support one another. And um, so, you know, I probably am writing a little bit more towards women. And so, um, yeah. And, um, because I, I think we, I, I think we're the stronger sex. I'm sorry, I do. You know, <laughs> that's 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 right. That's right. Oh my god! Well, we make, you know? and so, we create um, life for crying out loud. That's right. That's right. You know, I, we're, I hate it when women are expected to with just raise a little bit of help, to right? work, so. to clean up the house, to do all the chores. You know, some of these men and they're sitting there, you know, playing video games or whatever. And go, come on, you know, what's wrong with you? <laughs> 
Ja. <laughs> what have you what have you personally you know, run into it's, it's as people's greatest challenges on this you know, whole about, aging uh, journey think, so far? I think there's a lot of ageism. I'm sorry to say it, you know, people have expectations for you once they oh. find out what age you are. You know, I had a, yeah. you know, I take this hot yoga class um, most days. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a hard class and, mm -hmm. um, but I enjoy it. And I was talking to somebody um, and we started talking about, you know, well, how old are you? How old are you? And, you know, and I said, well, I'm 71. She goes, oh my God, what are you doing here? You're too old for this class. And I went, hey, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm doing just fine, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I, a, a lot of people <laughs> look at the age as being a limitation. And yet we see so many people, you know, like Dick Van Dyke. I just saw that he just put an exercise video up for other people. He's 94 years old. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, he's he's awesome because he's enjoying life at his age and he's trying to help other people. My dad is 97 and I, I keep telling him he's the healthiest one in the family. You know, I mean, so there are a lot of people out there that don't fit that paradigm that aging is an inev inevitable period of decline. They're rocking their age. They're enjoying life regardless of what a number says. And that's the message I want to get out. We can all do that. I love that. What's, what opportunities do you have <laughs> up ahead? I mean, what are you looking forward to in the next five or as 10 long as or I'm more alive, years? I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, keep trying well, new course. things. I just We're wrote a screenplay. Yeah. I've never done that before. And um, I'm learning a lot about how that works. And, um, you know, I just really enjoy you know, wow. putting myself out there and just starting something new. And, you know, a lot of my friends, you know, go, God, why do you do that? That's scary. And, um, you know, a lot of times people just get stuck with what they know and they don't want to do anything else. And I go, that's no way to live. I want to have fun. I want to try something new. I want to surprise myself. And if I can't do it, you know, if I enjoy it, I'll just keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and I have to ask this because more than once on the show today, you've said, you yes, know, my students yes, I, and I they're at this point and my students, so you're 71, but it sounds to me like you're still teaching. I, I taught three years at a high school. And um, so I switched to part-time though to take better care of my family because my mom had Alzheimer's and my daughter was starting a family. And so I didn't quit my job, but I just switched to part time. And um, now with COVID, we're, um, we're doing remote and I'm going to wait to go back face to face because I really love, you know, um, just that interaction that you can't get online. And so, yeah. So yeah, I'm still teaching. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. And we met really because of your book, Coming Across Win at Aging. So I'd love for you to, without giving away the the juicy parts, tell us, you know, I mean, what's it like? We picked this up and, and a reader has it. What's it like to read it? Is it a yeah, I, read from yeah, cover I to cover book? Is it a dive into a certain chapter that's more interesting? That, tell us a little um, book about that the book. you were interested in because I try to... Again, use an athletic paradigm, you know, kind of a idea as to. So I do sports speak, which is basically talking about meet your competition, scouting your opponents, um, those those kinds of things. Um, stay in the game until the end. Your game plan. And so, um, you know, so these are all mm -hmm. basically. Since I'm a health professor. I've taken a lot of things. We're talking about nutrition, and I call it your new superpower, power, exercise. I'm a huge fan of exercise. Like I say, is when you're older, it's no longer optional. <laughs> so you, yes, yes. And of course, I'm into right. very much into holistic training we principles. We could say that so again. Those are right? kind of yeah. the chapter <laughs> headings. And so, like, if somebody was interested in nutrition, they would probably just go look and see what I had there. Or um, if they wanted to talk about, like, meditation and yoga and stress management, I have 
I have a chapter called Time Out. You know, have you have you ever taken a time out when you're an athlete? Time out, you know. <laughs> and so, <laughs> that's that's right. And and um, aging is a team sport. That's so. I've been in that penalty box really once or twice. That, yeah. Everybody needs to be <laughs> surrounded by people that support them. And, you know, I, I tell people, stay away from the psychic vampires. Those are the people that make you feel worse for being with them. I mean, I know you probably know some. I know some, too. And um, they just drain your energy. And you, you try and stay away from those people. I had a woman at one of my speeches. She raised her hand. And she goes, what if your husband's a psychic vampire? <laughs> Oh God. then you've got to crowd them out. You've got to get other people in your life that support you, that make you happy. And, you know, just, you know, don't spend all your time with them. And so, um, yeah, so I think the book is, if you wanted to read it from, it's it's not meant to be read from cover to cover, though. You know, so um, you can just pick a chapter that you're interested in and, you know, kind of see if there's something in there that will help. You know, my my book, uh, there's some, there'll be some people that will won't, agree with some of the things that I say, maybe they wouldn't work for them. And that's okay. You know, I mean, just take what you think you could utilize to make your life better. And then it's a useful book. Fantastic. I love it. I and think, Sharky, well, we've no, got not you really here. A question. Is there a question again, I should have asked you I would that we missed? Emphasize, you know, people stepping up instead of getting stepped on. I mean, this is our life. And we are the ones in control. We need to stop being in the back seat um, of the car. <laughs> you know? We need to get up and, and drive through our life. We need to be in control. We need to be in charge. And we need to get people that support us. Because, um, you know, it's, you know, far as we know, we only get one chance at this, right? So true. Yes. And Everybody, listeners, if there's a question that you would have asked that we missed, you can add that to the show notes at oh, flipping50.com forward slash win at aging. Sharky, thanks so much for being here. It's a pleasure. <laughs> hey, listeners, what are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 together.